told uh, the person I was reporting up to, hey, I got to disconnect from this for a bit. And he's just like, that's ridiculous. You, um, um, you know, I don't understand what your problem is. And I'm just like, oh, you're about to. Because that is not how you treat somebody. And I, uh, I'm, on, I'm, yeah. I'm also autistic. And, um, you know, I, I've recently faced bullying from my team. Uh, somebody was trying to come after me. And when I went to respond, um, they they all dogpiled me, said that I'm just an embarrassment, and that, uh, you know, when you're neurodivergent, I think it's easy for people to team up on you and, um, you know, really treat you like shit because they don't they don't see you as an equal. Uh, they've uh, it's it's just so hard to deal with, and I I just don't know how to get away from it, you know. Man, I'm sorry. Yeah, your coworkers yeah. are real dipshits. They, I think yeah. they are. I think they're really, really uh, just mean, bad people. Yeah, well, just taking advantage of. Well, they're they're cowards. Number one. Exactly. Or anything else, they are cowards, and they uh, see you, and for whatever reason, believe that. Uh, you're an easy one to pick on and as hard as it is but i um usually like if my daughters had come home and saying so and so is bullying me i would just say you know don't don't feed the trolls right don't feed the trolls uh what they were wanting to get out of you is a reaction and that reaction is the troll's food so, and I don't know if that's an option for you to just. Well, the you know, thing, the sit. thing is, is that I just, you know, I just wanted to get the truth out there. Um, I just wanted to bring certain things to light and be transparent. Mm -hmm. And, uh, my team, you know, they, they don't see it that way. Clearly they don't appreciate the truth. They don't appreciate transparency. And so they all, um, bullied me and told me, you know, don't don't respond to these people don't don't give them the light of day because it's it's wrong it, it, it's wrong to do that you're embarrassing us because they see um autistic people as embarrassments i suppose even though i suppose i i i suspect many of them may have uh autism themselves in some way but maybe that's just projection on my part no, there's a lot of undiagnosed autism in society, especially because, like, autism is seen as a negative thing. So if you have any kind of privilege in society or any way to function without a diagnosis, like, you know, statistically, your parents are probably fairly likely to try and leave you undiagnosed. Like, personally, I've met a ton of people who I can just tell are on the spectrum, mm -hmm. but they've never been diagnosed, they've never engaged with it on that axis so they don't think of themselves as being autistic. They just think of yeah. themselves as being a little bit weird, which... Are, are, I mean, you, are you personally so on the spectrum, Taya? Sorry? Are you personally on the spectrum, Taya? Uh, yes, I am. I, I'm glad that there's so many allies in the anti-work community that understand, uh, you know, what I'm going through. Yeah. The I mean, biggest unifier... Go ahead. The biggest Pardon. unifier is hate. Mm -hmm. Many of us have been discriminated against, so we join together. What's interesting about that too is is earlier today, um, we had one of our, our our team leaders send out emails at three in the morning, and um, and I had responded to leadership along with the rest of the team, saying, you know, if you can avoid it, please don't send emails to us at three a.m. I understand you may be in different time zones, but uh, you know, we respect your time. Please respect ours. And um, the response was a, a bunch of excuses. Well, I, I get up early and, and start my day at 5, so just because you get emails at 2 and 3 a.m., that that's just something you'll have to put up with. And so I responded to the rest of the team. Well, you know, here's here are some instructions where you can mark this the sender's messages as red, so long as you leave your mail client open. Um, they won't send you notifications. And if they decide to respect the rest of the team, here's the instructions for them, how they can delay their messages until a reasonable hour. 
And um, I got a lot of response. I was uh, quite surprised with that. But yeah, group grouping together, having uh, having your allies and remembering that, um, you know, th there's no reason to accept bullying from anybody at the workplace. You're there to, you know, uh, reduce costs and increase revenue. So I anything that stands in the way of that is counterintuitive to its own cause, really. Absolutely. Nobody, nobody should uh, be, f be forced to face that indignity of being bullied by um, their fellow teammates. It's just, you know, it's, it's disgusting. It's disgusting behavior that no, no self-respecting person should have to deal with. Also part of the, and this kind of stems back to the manager talk from a couple weeks ago, is identifying people who have vulnerabilities and as a employer, boss, or manager, like definitely going to bat for them if they, if you see sense that they're struggling, if they're not coming to you directly, and especially if they come to you directly, like if you know that someone is competent, good, like all their intentions are solid, they do what they need to do, they don't cause a disturbance. If there's something disturbing them, which is to most people just like, ah, oh, just get over it. It's not uncouth for someone who manages to try and go and back up those employees. Like, if someone's being bullied, the manager can be like, dude, do you want this fucking person to quit? Like, are you fucking serious right now? Like, get your right. quit being, quit acting like kids and fucking treat them like you would treat. You see, my, my sensibility is like, treat people the way you want to be treated. But some people, like, you know, not to be weird or right, anything, but some people like to be mistreated. But another thing is, treat people the way you would treat your parents, your kids someone that means something to you, someone you care about that you wouldn't mistreat, but that's also a little touchy because some people don't treat their kids very well. Some people don't treat their parents very well. Shit, some yeah. people don't even treat their friends very well. See, and that's a childish right. mentality to have, but at the same time, when you make those contrasts, it's like if if someone's mistreating someone else at the workplace in an unfair manner, it's like you go up to the person mistreating someone, it's like, would you treat your blah, 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 like someone you care about like this? And if they say, yeah, it's like, that's that's a real big red flag right there. Because like, oh, you treat loved ones like this? Wow, I don't want to work with you. I don't want to employ you. I don't want you to be a worker here. And it's not an unfair, like, an anti-work, like, I don't want you to mm -hmm. work here. It's like, it's a rightful, like, why are you behaving like a little kid would behave? Like, you're, all, you're better than this. You're mature. You're older. You should know better. Right. And it's the idea of knowing better that really gets me. Well, treat people. Them, treat um, people. I learned, uh, I'm sorry. Treat people the way that you want to be treated. You know, don't don't go on Discord and dress them no. down. You know, just if someone's your coworker, if you're on a team with them, you shouldn't be bullying them on Discord. I I, I agree with that because that's what I've been going through, and it's just wrong. Yeah, there's one thing you just said I do disagree with. Is do not pe treat people how you want to be treated. Treat people how they want to be treated. Because, for instance. I've worked with lots of different people and um, I've seen people at reception desks talk down to and hand somebody in a wheelchair the paperwork. They didn't want to be treated special. They didn't want to be treated as somebody who was disabled. They just wanted to be treated as a person. So you have to treat people how they want to be treated and ask them, don't make assumptions. Everyone's not the same. So I don't treat people how I want to be treated. I try and treat people how they want to be treated. Treat people with the bare minimum at treat people with the bare minimum at the minimum. Yeah, don't like be um, an asshole. Well, no, no. I think oh man, is that how do you say your name? Is that Chosy? Zakorizo? Yeah, sorry, it's a... <laughs> oh boy, I'm not going to try that. But I'm going to just call you Zach. Is that okay? Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Um, greeting people. Like, seriously, there's there's one thing that I've noticed. There's two kinds of people. You walk into work, and someone greets you. And sometimes, I mean, I'll greet someone back, or I'll greet someone when they come in. But I always think about, like, sometimes... I'll walk into a situation and someone will be like, hey, what's up? They'll want to interact with me. I'm like, nope, I just got here. Let me let me, let me, me get situated. Then I'll start to socialize. Like, that's what kind of person I am. Like, if I go out, like, if I'm with a group, I'm already in, like, I'm going out mode. But if I go out by myself, like, I'm going to get to a place. And the first thing I do isn't going to be trying to interact with someone. It's going to sit down, 
figure out like where I'm going to be, like maybe order something if I'm out like getting drinks, like I'm going to order a drink, get situated, see if there's anything on the TV, fuck around on my phone for a second. And then after I kind of do all that, then I'm going to socialize. And it works that way in the workplace too. Like there's been times where like someone would come into work and be like, hey, how are you? And they're like, I'm fine. And they would just go on with their business. So I'm like, ah. They don't want to fuck over. They don't want to interact with me. That's cool, but there's been times where someone would come into work, and I wouldn't greet them, and they and they would greet me, and I'd be like, "Oh, hey, what's up?" But then I would, the tables would be turned. It's like I don't want to interact with you because, well, I'm in the middle of some shit right now, and I'm a little busy. And they'll like want to talk to you, and it's like, don't disturb my workflow. Like I'm in the middle of something. Just like let me. Let me do my thing, and then maybe in a little while we can come back. But it's all about timing and mindset because everyone's – everyone it's it's so cliche to say everyone's different, but it's true. And no one can really know what's going on inside your head, what's going on at home. They can figure it out over time, but that takes energy, and it takes the interaction, which if someone doesn't want an interaction, you're not really going to know what they're thinking or what's going on outside of the situation at hand. That's true. And I think that starting out by treating people as you would like to be treated is a good starting place. But then eventually, yes, like as soon as you have a couple interactions down, um, you know, treating them as they'd like to be treated is far better. Um, but until you know them, you know, what else do you have but uh, what, you, what you enjoy? Um, I feel that, though. I mean, sometimes I have some folks who, uh, you know, at, at the workplace prefer to greet me. I respond with a greeting and then they'll tell me why they're talking to me in the first place. I try to wrap as many of those together, but I'm a little more transactional. Maybe that means... I've been told I might be on the spectrum myself. <laughs> well, I mean, one of the things when it comes to treat others are. the way that you want to be treated, like what you're actually doing, like as you hit on, it's a lack of information. So what you're specifically saying is there's no there's a lack of information on how you know we should be treating each other. So I will model the behavior that I would like you to um, treat me with. You know, essentially, sort of soft setting a rule just by example. You know, so like there is an actual like behavioral reason for it. And it's just easy to generalize it into things like, you know, phrases like the golden rule because, you know, not because of it's any it's an intrinsically, you know, special process. It's just a very easy mnemonic to get people, you know, to understand just the basic socialization of you know, instead of just sitting there and explaining to people, just model the behavior and let them figure it out. Well, how do we how do we thing. deal with workplace bullies? You know, how do we deal with mm -hmm. people that uh, denigrate us, that talk down to us over Discord, that really, um, you know, go for the throat and treat us like trash when we're just trying to get the truth out there? So I actually might be able to answer this. Um, right. One thing that I didn't mention just now about like treating people the way that they would like to be treated, or just like greeting people. But the other side of the coin is like. How did someone learn to be around people and interact with them? Because, again, it's different for a lot of people, but there's certain trends in society where, like, it's just normal. Like, you got nice people, you got quiet people, you got smart people, you got dumb people. But at the end, of, like, at the bottom of the bucket, like, the bottom line is just basically, like, there's normal standards of interaction, but they can flex a little bit. Like, for instance, I've got a friends group, and growing up, my friend's group was, well, they'll, they'll, they'll tease each other. They'll fuck with each other. They'll, they'll mess with you. And sometimes they'll go a little overboard because kids will be kids. But that's a, sh that's a method of involving people in a sort of like camaraderie sort of sense. Like, you fuck with me. Like, it, you, you mess with me. You push me to my emotional thresholds. That's what I'm trying to figure out where that threshold actually is. And that's actually kind of a good thing in a sense because you want to understand how far someone can be pushed because if you go over the line there's usually no going back over the line like once you've crossed the line it's like oh fuck so you kind of want to understand where that line is without reaching that line in a context that is super super serious like if someone is under serious duress and you fuck with them you may have just crossed the line because they're already there whereas if someone is completely fine completely normal and you do or say the smallest thing and it sets them right over the line their line was already reached even though they seemed fine and this is a situation with people who are neurodivergent especially people who suffer from things like adhd and bipolar and yes uh, being on the spectrum but 
bipolar is a big one because someone could just be sitting there. You say one little thing. It's like, oh, hey, I like your hair. They were like, what the fuck do you mean? And it's just like, oh, shit. But some people are kind of just designed like that. And to figure that out with people that you work with, it's very difficult at times because sometimes it's not appropriate to pry. But other times it like is like I was saying, what's going on outside of work? I work with a woman whose daughter, I mean, basically tried to kill herself a couple months ago and she was having to call in a lot and deal with that shit and she was bringing all that baggage into work with her even though like there's a unspoken rule like you gotta check your baggage at the door and if you can't like you might as well not show up but my boss was having to deal with that and we retained her she's she she's a bit older again she's got a daughter who's like almost an adult basically who lives with her and just we were all very patient with her she 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 wasn't like a stellar worker or anything like that. She was just she was she worked with us, but we all tried to treat her right. But plenty of us had negative things to say about how she was when she wasn't present, but none of us would take it to her face. And one time she actually said, because I was just explaining how to do a thing, and as you can tell, I can be a certain way. She was like, "Wow, you're really annoying," and uh, my response to that wasn't, "Oh, well, go fuck yourself." It was. Eh, I can be, but that's just me. And that was just how I left it. I could have been really aggressive, really chewed her a fucking new one, but I didn't because one, she was dealing some shit outside work, but sometimes that's just how people like think is appropriate. And I wasn't going to preach or be like, oh, that's not very nice. But at the same time, like, uh, and I'm going to try and stop talking here, but just the other day, me and my boss were working. It was super fucking busy. And one thing I can say is when it's super fucking busy, we got to rely on each other a lot. And I could tell he was getting like overwhelmed. I wasn't getting overwhelmed, but like I had plenty of shit to do. And I was doing this, that, and the other thing. And he asked me for a favor. And I kind of met him like sort of halfway. Like I brought him something without preparing it, basically implying, oh, prepare it yourself. And he's like, dude, why didn't you fucking prepare it? And I'm like, uh, you just asked for it. He's like, dude, you're a fuckhead. And I'm like, I want to be like, dude, you want me to walk out right now? Like, I've known this guy for 10 years, and he called me a fuckhead. And I'm like, but I didn't dwell on it. I just like, you know what? You're right. Did the thing. I uh, got over it, and it, it didn't really affect the day's work or my relationship with him. But him calling me a fuckhead, it was like, dude, why'd you have to do that? But then I thought about him. Like, he's about the same age as me, same type of person as me. And, like, would I call any of my friends a fuckhead? If they f fucked up, I'd be like, dude, what are you, a fuckhead? But... It's just an understanding that he and I have, whereas if I didn't know my boss like that, I would have straight walked the fuck out. I've been like, oh, I'm a fuckhead? Bye. Have fun dealing with this mess. Could I uh, Could I get in? Because I, I have to leave here pretty soon. I just yeah. have one final yes, thought. Um, yeah, go you, ahead. You, you seem very uh, patient and understanding um, it, with your real-life job, which, you know, is interesting because in the anti-work mod Discord leaks, you weren't very patient to Mirari when you were, uh, which you can find at rdrama.net, you can find. <laughs> ah! I thought I recognized that kind of voice. Yeah, I thought that that guy was making a few specific comments. But... No, 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 actually his accent fit right away. No, that, that guy was giving me, like, yellow flags, like, all, all yeah. along. Like, I, 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 I heard but... it, too. Just the way he sounded, I'm just like, yeah, I recognize that voice. But let's see where this goes. I mean, I, got... expect, like, I, I know for a this... fact that this guy is going to uh, yeah. try to weaponize me saying, that whole, like, are you on the autism spectrum? Yes thing. Like, I don't expect <laughs> that that loser is going to try and put that up onto YouTube. Yeah. Because that's the kind of thing that some people unfortunately do with these talks. As that person alluded to, they come in and they try to troll. And they will sometimes, you know, try to pass themselves off as something that, you know, that they aren't because... You know, they know that it's not really reasonable to just scrutinize every guest. Not It's not reasonable or fair to treat every guest as though they're coming from a place of dishonesty. So they'll tell these kind of stories that have these little holes in them that, yes, if you go back and look for them, they're pretty obvious. But if you're just casually going along, like, no, they are 100% taking advantage of trust and just saying, oh, I owned you, I trolled you. But, you know, that's them just... Yeah. you know, being assholes, and unfortunately... <laughs> it's more about them than you. Yeah, like, and, and unfortunately, um, you know, it has been the case 
that there have been people who come in trying to mine these talks for, you know, YouTube drama. And, you know, it's just a fact of life, unfortunately, that, uh, you know, that we sometimes this have is to also put up with them. As a moderator, understand. just like, and, and as a moderator, like, we do try to. Oh no, I've been kicked. Oh no. <laughs> All right, bros, here we go. That's what I got today. Got him again.